You know what? I'm starting to think that this isn't a skewer. What is up guys, Nick here, and today I have something super special for you all. We're gonna be talking about the Skewer by Caramel Designs. He also goes by Taffy. So I've had this blaster for quite a while now, I'd say around six months, and right off the bat, I have to let you guys know, I absolutely adore this thing. And the reason why I'm talking about it now is because this platform has become the basis for quite a few new designs. For instance, you have a pump action skewer remix, you have the tour, which is literally two skewers fused together. You also have the, I think, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a skewer that's designed using hands, which kind of lives in my nightmares. There's also a skewer that has a 95 crossbow-esque stock, also a front grip on it. And there's also a version of this blaster that is straight up a 95 crossbow reshell, and it is chef's kiss. And there's also a creator out there that is using the skewer as a base to create a Nerf AEG full auto blaster, which is absolutely bananas. So suffice to say, the Skewer is a super popular platform right now, and I totally understand why. For starters, the design language on this thing is absolutely fantastic. As you can see, the layout of all the different 3D components allow you to make an incredibly unique color scheme when building one. For example, on mine, I tried to replicate the general color scheme of the 95 crossbow, but I used a different kind of purple, so it kind of turns out like G1 Decepticon, which is totally fine by me, I love Transformers. But if we're talking about the actual aesthetics of the design, my favorite component about this whole blaster has to be this entire front end. It reminds me a lot of the gas block on an AK without looking like an actual firearm, which is absolutely amazing. It just replicates the exact same shape. So basically you have the barrel and then you have this component that attaches to the barrel and wraps around. And I also love how much exposed barrel material there is. It's really nice without, you know, actually being dangerous because you have this front end cap. Not only does it look great, but it also keeps you from skewering people with uh, the exposed barrel, which uh, kind of defeats the purpose of it being called a skewer, but that's a whole other thing. Not that I want to injure people with my blaster, but you know. And as you can tell, this blaster also features some pretty funky ergonomics. You might have noticed in the intro video, but I was holding the bottom of the barrel like this because there isn't an actual foregrip down here, but there are these fantastic little grooves on both sides of the magwell, which allow you to rest your thumb across it. So basically the entire magwell and magazine turns into a vertical foregrip, which is really, really nice. Speaking of magwells, the skewer has one of the best magwells out there in the game right now. It's just fantastic. Check this out. Magazine, skewer. Absolutely incredible. Basically, the quality of the actual magwell comes down to a variety of things. So the skewer has the hybrid ramrod pusher by Captain Slug. On top of that, you have a flared magwell, and you have a super responsive magazine release due to the elastic cord used to hold it back. The one downside to the actual ergonomics, and this isn't to the blaster's fault, it's supposed to be like this. To actually aim down the sights, you really have to choke up on it. For me personally, it isn't that much of a big deal. I'm not a super tall person, I'm about 5'8", so I can fairly easily choke up on the blaster, even though it doesn't actually have a stock. This is the actual T-pole to prime it, but I can still rest my shoulder on it fairly easily and aim down the sights. There are a few things that kind of bother me with this blaster, but to be quite honest, they're totally nitpicks, but we'll go through them right now. First off, personally, I'm not a big fan of using threaded rods to hold the entire body of the blaster together. I much rather use flat aluminum bars or any other means of assembly when building a blaster like this, but that's just me personally. And on top of that, I had a really hard time with the elastic cords for the mag release and the trigger. Listen, I didn't go to Boy Scouts. I don't know how to tie knots properly. So this was a huge pain for me to actually put together, but whatever. 
I much rather my springs, okay? But that being said, this was actually one of the first blasters I've assembled using threaded rods and elastic cords, so I'm guessing that with time, I should be able to put these together fairly easy. I just realized I haven't even fired this blaster on camera yet besides the B-roll. Yeah, she slaps. It hits about 200 to 220 FPS, which is quite spicy. And what's really nice about the T-Pole is the weight of the Prime is actually fairly light for what it is. Like this blaster is fairly powerful. It's 200 to 220 FPS, which isn't a joke. All in all guys, I definitely recommend picking up the skewer. And if you haven't had the chance to actually check one out, there is a plethora of different remixes out there of the original skewer that I'm sure there's something that'll suit your fancy. And with that guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna help and support the channel, please like this video and leave a comment in the comment sections down below. It'll greatly help the analytics on this channel. And I really hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.